These four words right here represent the movement pattern that every single high level player uses on the court. It's the same in pickleball, it's the same in tennis. The problem is when I watch the amateur level, I don't see these happening as much. So today I'm gonna to tell you what they are, I'm gonna explain them, I'm gonna get you on the way to doing them yourself. Let's go. So if you've watched any pro level or high level pickleball, probably what you've noticed is that all the players on the court move in a very coordinated way, okay? The reason for that is because all of the movements are dictated by what the ball is doing and what's happening at that time in the point. When we do this, we can stay in rhythm. We can stay in rhythm with our partner, with the ball, with our opponents, and play much better pickleball. So let's get into what these are and how they can make you better on the court. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is I am gonna take you through all four of these. I'm gonna tell you what they are. I'm gonna explain them each, and then I'm gonna show you a scenario um, on my board over here of each one of these kind of as they unfold. After that, we're gonna take a look at some live pro player clips. I'm gonna show you all of these movements in real time in a match. All right, so let's go. So the setup here, I have player A, player B, they're the serving team. Player C, player D are the receiving team. And player D is gonna be the one receiving the serve. Okay, so for our first one here, Player D is in what we commonly think of as ready position or neutral position, okay? So this first one is ready. And that basically means, you know, you're, you're ready when your opponent is about to hit the ball and you don't know where it's gonna go. You don't know what they're gonna do, how hard they're gonna hit it, where they're gonna hit it, okay? So player D right now is returning the serve. He doesn't know where player A is gonna hit it. Is it gonna go wide? Is it gonna go in the middle? He doesn't know where that ball is gonna go. So he is in a ready, neutral position so he can react in any direction, okay? That brings us to the second one, which I just said, which is react, okay? So once player A hits the serve, ball starts flying. Once player D sees where it's going, he's gonna since he was neutral, he's gonna react. He's gonna start moving in that direction of where he sees the ball going. As I've said in some other videos before, one thing I like to do here is a concept I call beating the ball to the spot. So player D is gonna to try to read that ball. He's gonna to try to intercept it, and he's gonna to try to get to that spot before the ball does so that he can slow down and get under control. So number three is execute. So now he's in the spot. He's got his body under control. He is, you know, done kind of the movement portion of it. Now the execute part is you've got to hit the shot, right? So like we talked about in the pause video, your execution is going to be better the more under control and the more slowed down you are. So the sooner you get to that spot, the better your execution will be. After we execute, he hits the ball. It starts traveling back. When the ball is now traveling away from the player that just hit it, the last thing we do is improve, which means we improve our position, okay? So as the ball is traveling away, most of the time you're not gonna be in your best possible spot on the court. So that is your time to improve position while that's happening. So player D is gonna come up, start working his way up to the net. Player C is gonna maybe hedge over to the middle a little bit here so that by the time that ball gets back over here, we're in good position. And now guess what? The process starts all over again. Say the ball comes here, player B is gonna play the ball. Player D and C now go back to step one, which is be ready again. You don't know where they're hitting it. You don't know how hard they're hitting it. So you're neutral, you're ready, and you're waiting to see what happens. This process just continues over and over and over again. This is just a cycle that continues to occur each time the ball crosses the net back and forth. So of these four things, the common ones that I see that a lot of amateurs struggle with are the ready part and especially the improved part. 
okay? We've all heard about the importance of ready position. It gets talked about endlessly. What's the right ready position? Should your paddle be up, down, blah, blah, blah. The main goal is be athletic in your ready position and be neutral, meaning you're not favoring one side or the other. You're not leaning one way or the other. You're just neutral so that you're ready to react when you actually see the ball get hit, okay? But the big one is down here with improve, okay? This is the big thing that I see, um, you know, probably most amateur players not doing, okay? So say we're ready, the ball comes, we react to it, okay? Of course, we're gonna execute. Nobody doesn't not execute, because that's just obvious. Some can execute better than others, but we all execute. The big one is after that ball leaves, the amateur player a lot of times will skip this improve part. They're not gonna better their position while the ball's traveling away from them. They're just gonna kinda watch it. And then they're gonna wait till it gets hit again, and then they're gonna react to the next ball. Okay, so improving our position based on that shot that was just hit is gonna help you a lot because that makes the next time you have to react to the ball a lot easier. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna take a look at these movements in some live point play. We're gonna check out one player at a time and watch their movement through the point. So first, I want you to keep your eyes on Kyle Yates. The ball is about to be hit, so he's in his ready position first. When it gets hit, he goes to react. Then he executes the shot and then he's gonna improve his position. Then we go back to ready, react, execute the shot, improve the position. So you can see this pattern goes over and over and over. It's just a repeating pattern. These four steps continue to happen and they're happening with all four players on the court at the same time. So for this next one, uh, I'm gonna be the example. I'm in the far court. I'm ready first, ball gets hit, I react. Ball comes to me, I execute my shot, and then I'm improving my position by following it in. So as this point unfolds here, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what improving position actually means. Most of the time in pickleball, our goal is to move forward, but improving po position could mean moving left or right to follow the ball. It could even mean backing up if we popped a ball up. I don't actually have time in this video to go into all the details about positioning because that could be multiple videos in and of itself. But the basic concept is that the spot that you're in is probably not the best spot on the court. So you're gonna improve on your position after every shot you hit. So for this last point, the focus is gonna be on Dylan Frazier in the near court with the Onyx shirt on. I'm gonna let you just follow him and see if you can pick up on all these movements as they happen. As you're watching, I wanna talk about one little nuance of this. When the ball comes to your side of the net, if you're not the person hitting, that means you get to skip the execution phase. So that means you skip execute and you go right to improve. One phrase I always use when I'm coaching is pretty simple. If you're not doing something, do something, which means if you're not the one hitting the ball, then improve your position, get in a better spot, find a way to help out in the point. I hope you guys got some benefit out of this video. It's time to get out in the court and try it out. I always love to see your comments and questions below and interact with you guys. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time. Thanks.